So, holy shit, Blue Beetle looks amazing. How in the hell has no one ever thought to make Blue Beetle a fucking Power Ranger? That's genius. He's gonna have a buster sword. Who gives a superhero a buster sword? That's the coolest shit. Not the point. Not the point in the video. Anyway, I wanted to talk about a different character that appeared in the Blue Beetle trailer because there, there's a thing I want to talk about about him. If you look way in the background in the shot that they're in, like, the laboratory, you'll see this costume. That would be the outfit of the second Blue Beetle and the most popular Blue Beetle before Jaime Reyes, Ted Kord. If you don't know who Ted Kord is, essentially imagine Batman and then take away all the parts that make Batman a dickhead. He's a nice, compassionate billionaire who likes to fight crime and simply just decides to do that dressed as a beetle. Why am I talking about Ted Kord when the trailer for Jaime Reyes Blue Beetle came out today? Well, it's because it got me thinking. How many characters in canon are universally loved by every other character in that canon? I'm talking characters that in the universe that they reside are loved by everybody there. Nobody's really got anything bad to say about him. Because when I think of that, I think like Pa Kent, Gwen Stacy, maybe fucking Uncle Ben. My point is that not a lot of actual superheroes with dedicated stories show up on that list. Everyone usually has a storyline where they're a piece of shit or people don't like them or they're at odds with a group of people. But like, Ted Kord really doesn't? Ted Kord is one of the only superheroes in comics that I can think of that absolutely everybody in the universe just loves. Like, yeah, he was at odds with, like, I don't know, Guy Gardner when they were in the Justice League International for a while, but that's, let's be honest, that's probably because Guy Gardner is Guy Gardner. Dude could probably find ways to have beef with a tree. And I mean, shit, even taking that into consideration, in modern comics, Guy's got nothing but positive things to say about Ted. Given his positive identity is probably related to the fact that, much like Gwen Stacy, he fucking died. Spoiler alert. But yeah, Ted Kord dies in a big event comic when Maxwell Lord kills him as part of a bigger scheme. And since then, he's been held up as kind of like the platonic ideal of what a normal guy superhero can be. Batman respects him, Jaime Reyes looks up to him, Booster Gold was best friends with the man. I honestly just kind of hope that he's in the Blue Beetle movie. Even if it's in a flashback, even if he dies trying to pass off the scarab onto somebody else. I think that Ted Kord is like the most positive male superhero that you could possibly find outside of like maybe superman and that's literally superman i just went on this huge tangent and i don't really know how to wrap up the video so the blue beetle movie's gonna be badass they gave him a buster sword Sis Panda wants to go to across the Spider Verse. I, I, I've never done this before. If you're not able to really tell. You know what? I, I actually want to talk about this because this is not just an issue with the Blue Beetle. This is an issue with the Arrowverse. Let me run down a brief history for you. So it's the early 2000s, Smallville's coming out, and they want to have Batman in Smallville, but they can't afford the rights to Batman, so they make Oliver Queen the billionaire that's in Smallville. But instead of actually putting Oliver Queen in Smallville, they put Batman in Smallville and called him Oliver Queen. And then they gave him the whole Green Arrow regalia and everything, right? Okay, fast forward a couple of years. Smallville's over. Now they need to make a new show. Well, people really love that Batman that we called Green Arrow in Smallville, so why don't we make a show off of him? Oh, the actor doesn't want to come back? That's fine. Just reboot it. But do the same thing. Make a Batman show, but call it Green Arrow. Fast forward a couple more years, and that Batman show that you made that you disguised as a Green Arrow show is doing really, really good. And hey, you even had a cameo from The Flash who showed up in your show. Let's give him a spinoff. That would be great. So he gets his own show and things are going great, but now you want to create more of a combined universe. And hey, since you have a Batman character already, 
you need to have a Superman character for this whole combined universe that you're going to be making. So you take that Flash character that you have and you cram that square peg into that round hole until that Flash is your universe's Superman. The super bright and positive one that everybody loves that is the counterpart and best friend to the super dark Batman character. And somewhere in there you wanted to have Blue Beetle show up. But hey, we already put Blue Beetle in Smallville and it was the Jaime Reyes version with the Scarab. And visual effects in TV shows are not at the level yet that you want them to put the Scarab in TV show. So what do you do? Simple solution. You put Ted Cord in, right? Ah, but there's that pesky rights again. You can't get the rights to Ted Cord. So like a good producer, remembering your continuous string of falling upwards, you decide to take that square peg and pound it into that round hole until the fucking edges break off. And you put Ted Cord in your show, goddammit, but you call him Ray Palmer. And sure, I guess sometimes he can have shrinking powers, but he still gets the lasers and the super billionaire status. And hey, remember that Flash show that you were doing? Well, you want to have another character pop up, but you're not really sure what to do. Because you want to put Plastic Man in your show, but you can't get the rights to Plastic Man. So you have an amazing amazing solution that has never been done before. You put Plastic Man in your show, but you call him the Elongated Man! He acts the same, has a similar backstory, has a similar facial structure, but fuck it, we're gonna call him the Elongated Man because there's a second character with the same power. Jumping back to that Batman show in a Green Arrow trench coat, you want to give your Green Arrow a team. But here's a problem, Green Arrow in the comics has never really had a team before. But no, <laughs> silly you, you forgot that you're not making a Green Arrow show, you're making a Batman show. Batman, well, he's got plenty of sidekicks. He's got Oracle, he's got Nightwing, he's got Red Hood. So you can throw together a team of characters that nobody's ever fucking heard of before. I dare you, I fucking defy you to tell me that you knew who Wild Dog was before that goddamn show made him essentially Red Hood. You even go fully mask off and make one of the bad guys Prometheus, who's a Batman villain. <sighs> I had more to say about this than I thought I did. The long and short of it is that the Arrowverse is like 98% characters masquerading as other characters. What are you talking about? Green Arrow always sounds like this. Okay, fuck it, why not? Let's cover Gotham's version of the Joker. Now, seeing as my last video contained a lot of, um, uh, ranting, and Gotham doesn't exactly stick, um, stick, stick loyal to the source, to say the absolute least. You're probably expecting me to go on a giant tirade. And to be honest, if you talked to me when Gotham came out, I probably fucking would have. When Gotham initially debuted its version of the Joker, or Jerome, as they called him, because the rights to the Joker himself were not, not up for grab. I find it absolutely insane that a company can own characters and a production company, but, but the production company doesn't own rights to the characters, so they have to appeal to the owners of the characters, even though the owners also own the production co Copyright law and IP law is fucking crazy. Anyway, the Gotham show had no right to actually use the Joker. Didn't have the rights to the character, but they didn't use the CW approach. That being, put him in there anyway and call him a different name. Well, I mean, they, they technically did, but they, they did it in a different way. Instead of being like, oh, it's not the Joker, it's the trickster, and it's, you know, same shit. Think Roy Palmer just being Ted Cord, even though he's very obviously not fucking Roy Palmer. They just put the Joker in the show and then just called him Jerome. And that that's where it started. We're going to put a pin in that because then they broke the cardinal rule of the Joker and they gave him an origin story. We're ignoring Joker, the, the movie. We're, we're going to ignore that for right now. But they gave Joker an origin story, which is like cardinal rule number six of comic books that you don't fucking do and then they made that origin story complicated as fuck the joker is two separate people in the gotham universe and i'm not th they don't do this three joker style they they have a pair of brothers that are both equally the joker they just embody two separate time frames of the joker and two different styles of the joker character throughout time oh my god it is three joker style holy shit i shit you not i came to that realization while i was in that rant oh my oh my fucking god but anyway they they have the the, the joker be be much, much different than he is without ever calling him the Joker, but it very obviously being the Joker. Oh yeah, he's, he's not the Joker. He just gets his face cussed off and then staples it back on so that it looks like a mask. And then he fights Bruce Wayne in a condemned circus. He's not the Joker. He just has his skin dyed white and his lips dyed red and his hair dyed a dark, indistinct color. They weren't allowed to dye the hair green. That was going to push it over the copyright line. So they made his hair black, but still made every other part of him the Joker. And then we're going to get the rights to the Joker for like a single episode. And we're going to put him in the purple suit, except for the fact that we're not actually going to make him look like the Joker because we're going to scar the fuck out of him and make that the definitive version of our Joker. Gotham, Gotham's weird, but like, I actually enjoy the fact that it's much, much different than the comics because it's, it's like a fun excursion. I also didn't not like the CW shows. I watched them for a long time, so th my rants don't mean I don't like them. It's just fun to point out the differences. Usually I have a witty intro for these, but I I've been so swamped with work for the past, like, month that I, I, I don't really know what to say. So, um, 
Welcome back to Regrettable Superhero of the Week, the weekly, now weekly show where I pick one character at random out of the League of Regrettable Superheroes and then I run them the fuck down. And Scarlet's back there if you hear typing in the background. Say hi, Scarlet. Hello. There we go. If you give me someone that we have gotten before, I am deleting you. Who are we getting? What is it? What is it? What it? Hold on, what? Hold on, what? <laughs> That is not a superhero. Not only is Son of Satan a superhero, he apparently looks exactly like Adam Warlock and is published by Marvel. I don't even care if this guy sucks. I need a movie about him yesterday. How did this get published in the 70s? Satanic Panic was still a thing. Yo, this this skeleton's looking looking pretty fucking jacked though. Do you think they win points in hell if they hit him directly in the center of the star? Also, wouldn't this technically be son of Mephisto if they're in Marvel? Or is Satan just one of Mephisto's nay? I I desperately want to know why this guy is the son of Satan if he is a Marvel character. This got comics code approval? I I How? Okay, so not only is this character still a thing in Marvel, but every character that he is associated with, save for one, has either been in or gotten a movie. So look out for Son of Satan in Phase 5. The Son of Satan was created by Gary Frederick and Herb Trimp in Ghost Rider Volume 2, Number 1 of Marvel Comics in September of 1973. The Son of Satan's real name, because, yeah, apparently he has a real name, is, um... <sighs> Damon Hellstrom. Damon Hellstrom. They uh they 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 really thought they were they were cooking with fire there, didn't they? Get fire because did say did, whatever. Apparently, much like Ghost Rider, he is just an anti-hero that fights demons on earth. Also, his sister Satana. If I had a nickel for every time that a Marvel anti-hero had a daughter that had a name that was just their name with an A at the end of it, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. But no shit, he's just a, uh, he's an occult investigator that turns into, uh, the son of Satan that night and fights demons. Being created in the 70s, you can imagine that he was pretty controversial and still kinda is. He flies around in a demon-drawn flaming chariot and usually doesn't even fight on Earth, but rather in, like, hell and other dimensions. And yeah, um, he, he's still around. He's still around today, but he just doesn't really use the Son of Satan pseudonym anymore. I'm gonna be real with you, this guy seems like just a more boring Ghost Rider. And even though that name is just... God, it's just something to behold, isn't it? I'm gonna have to give the Son of Satan a seal of regret. He appeared in a Ghost Rider comic. Why is he just Ghost Rider? <laughs> 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 Oh, where the fuck? Where the hell am I? Shit. This is not where I was before. Where the, where the fuck it? This isn't even my hat. What the fuck? What the hell is that in my hair? I didn't have a white streak. What the fuck? What the shit happened to me? Oh, good, you're awake. <laughs> Who the hell are you? Well, but get to that. Who, who, who do you think you are? Where are you right now? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Bill. I'm Bill. My name's Bill. I, I have no idea where I am right now. Where the fuck am I? Damn. That means you woke up halfway through. Okay, so just ease with me now. I'm gonna explain what's going on here. You fucking better or I'm gonna get real not nice real quick. Yes, yes, Bill. I'm sure you are. Um, you, you're in the middle of what's called a reboot. Oh, what? What the fuck? What the fuck do you mean? What do you mean a reboot? So... What's the last thing that you remember before you ended up here? I was, I was, I was tracking down some guy. I was tracking down some guy for, for, for my boss. That's right, you were tracking down a Lord Deathman, is that correct? Oh, fucking no, man, maybe? He looked like Skeletor, he had a skull for a face. Yes, that was Lord Deathman, that was his name. Can you please stop backing up? I can't be strong, sorry. I get ambushed by somebody who looks exactly the fuck like me. I'm in a place I don't fucking know. You need to start explaining shit right now, or I swear to God. Okay, okay, I look exactly like you because your brain will recognize this face the easiest, okay? What the fuck do you mean brain recognize Who the fuck are you? I'm an agent of the reboot. I'm here to make sure that you actually end up where you're supposed to go. Make that make sense in the next 30 seconds or you don't go home tonight. Well, I kind of have to make it make sense in the next 30 seconds. We only have that long in the video. What the f I swear to God, man. All right, Bill, your storyline got too convoluted. Nobody knew where it was going, all right? What do you mean my storyline got too convoluted? So instead of putting in the legwork to actually fix that storyline, we decided to just take the whole universe and start over. You're, you're starting over my universe because my storyline got too convoluted? Essentially, yes, that's 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 what's happening. You don't, you don't think that's a little fucking extreme? Well, apparently it turned out really good when we did it with the whole Crisis on Infinite Earths thing, and it turned out a little less good when we did it with the whole 
New 52, Thaba. Anyway, this is just how things are done around here. So you're going to end up where you're supposed to go, and all of this is going to be a hell of a lot simpler. What do you mean simpler? Where am I, mi- Let's hope this doesn't make you disappear for three months again. So what? <sighs> Yeah, 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 boss. If you fall asleep during another one of my heist presentations, I will dress you in a Robin outfit and beat you like target practice. Do you understand me? I... Yeah, yeah, boss. Back to work, man. All right, everybody do me a favor and ignore my fucking hair. I'm getting it cut tomorrow. Anyway, it's Superman Day. And in case it's not obvious, I'm a pretty big Supes fan. I think pretty much every major comic book fan is a pretty big Supes fan, or they are a big Supes fan in the making. And I know, you're sitting in, on your couch or wherever the fuck you are right now saying, I'm not a Superman fan, Superman's boring. He's just a super powerful character that can solve all the world's problems in two seconds. Give it a couple years. Let it simmer. Let him cook. You, you, trust me, you'll, you'll end up liking Superman. I, I was you. And it being Superman Day, I would like to talk about Superman. Oh, hmm? uh, no, not that one. No, I want to talk about this one. Who is this? That's Superman. That's THE Superman. More specifically, it was THE Superman that Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster created before creating Superman. In 1933's Reign of the Superman, they introduced a character by the name of William Dunn. William was a vagrant on the streets that gets abducted by an evil scientist called Professor Smalley. Professor Smalley doses Dunn with a concoction created out of a meteorite from the Dark Planet, whatever the fuck that means, which gives Dunn superhuman ability. Again, no, not like that. Dunn is given the ability to read people's minds, see anywhere in the world at any given time, Time, place thoughts in people's minds, and also has all of the knowledge in the known universe put into his head. All because a professor smuggled some fucking rocks into his coffee. Upon waking up with these abilities, Dunn does not become a superhero. In fact, Dunn immediately becomes a villain. Like, instantaneously. The first thing he thinks about is the fact that he is going to get a shit ton of money. He concocts a plan to be able to take over the entire world by making all of the nations on the planet go to war with each other, before Smalley kind of tries to stop him. Not because he doesn't want that to happen, but because Smalley is also an evil fucking supervillain and wants to do that himself. Dunn kills Smalley before realizing that he can't complete this plan because the concoction that he was given was temporary. And he didn't plan far enough ahead to actually be able to make another formula to make this permanent. And by the next day, he will be just another nobody. By the way, that entire, like, wrap-up of him discovering the fact that this was all for nothing happens in the last paragraph of an eight-page short story that this was from. If anything, the closest approximation that I have to the original Reign of the Superman story is... The movie with Bradley Cooper, what the fuck is the name of it? Limitless. Limitless with Bradley Cooper is like the closest approximation to the original Superman story. So yeah, comics are weird. Superman was originally a supervillain. Happy Superman Day. All right, so currently I'm 2-0 and with these motherfuckers. Second to last one was one we already covered, and the last one apparently is actually famous. Listen, I haven't had Hulu until like a year ago when I started dating Scarlett. I had no fucking clue that Hellstrom had a TV show. Who the fuck makes a show about the son of Satan? Shut the fuck up, DC. You're supposed to be on my side. And all my love to Sir Superhero. Great guy. Great DM. Watch our D&D show. But mother... Fucker, did you need to drag me like that? He didn't just say that Hellstrom was an active Marvel character. He showed all the ways that he is active. God damn, I was wrong as fuck. Welcome back to Regrettable Superhero of the Week, a weekly not weekly show where I apparently run down characters I've either already talked about or is fucking famous already. And then I run them the fuck down. You will give me somebody new, god damn it, or someone unknown. Let's fucking go. Who are we getting? Who are we getting? Don't you dare do slapstick, I swear to God. Se no fucking way. You gotta go fast! I'll get the chili dogs ready! I'm sorry, I don't know what voice that was. That absolutely was not Sonic. <laughs> and neither the fuck is this! Who the hell are you? What is this costume, man? This is a five color color scheme. White, yellow, blue, brown, and orange. Who designed this? Listen, every majorly successful superhero has a three-tone color scheme. Superman, red, blue, and yellow. 
Batman. Either blue, gray, and yellow, or black, gray, and yellow. Wonder Woman, also red, blue, and yellow. Booster Gold, blue, and yellow. Green Lantern, green, black, and white. Deadpool, red, black, and brown. Spider-Man, red, blue, and white. The X-Men, yellow and blue. I can go on forever. So what sort of cobbled together horror show is this? Watch, this guy's gonna be like either a homeless guy or like a veteran or something, and all of his costume is pieced together from things that inspired him, and I'm gonna look like an asshole in a second. Okay, after reading it, while his story is sympathetic, he's essentially boring Black Lightning. Thank God, I got worried there for a second. Sonic goes by the name Will Parker and was created by Joey Cavallari and Stan Wash in World's Finest Comics Volume 1, number 301 of DC Comics in December of 1984. Stop me if you've heard this one before. An impoverished but brilliant inner city kid gets a full ride scholarship to a university only to get his degree and come back to the neighborhood that he once left hoping to clean it up. He does so first by trying to use his smarts but eventually becomes a superhero cleaning up the streets in the old fashioned way. However, that doesn't disregard his smarts. In fact, he ends up working alongside superheroes like Superman and Batman. Man. And on top of that, he's one of the first black superheroes to have his own comic book. Does that sound familiar? Because that's Black Lightning's origin story. This dude is Black Lightning with an engineering degree. No superpowers to speak of, but he does have souped up electronics that shoot sonic waves, which is also a thing, including a goddamn Walkman strapped to his belt. Yeah, if you want to see this character in anything other than comic books, um, just, uh, just go watch Black Lightning. So basically, if this idea was more creative, watch, this guy's gonna have a fucking long-running TV show that I don't know. Maybe he's a major player in the next dark fucking multi-crisis. I'm sorry, I'm better. That ain't gonna stop the seal of regret, though. So I was feeling a little bit too good about, you know, the state of the world and everything today, so I decided to go on Twitter for a little bit. You know, really degrade how my brain is going, really get myself back in that depressed headspace, you know? And while I was on there, I saw something that... I, I swear it had to be a joke. There was no way someone said this with their whole goddamn chest. But, uh... But no, this is someone's actual take. I don't... I, I don't know how to... All right, hold on. Let's talk about how absolutely fine all the bat children are. Literally every single bat child has either gone through a stage where they hated Batman or idolized him to a terrifying extent. Dick Grayson has beat the Joker to death in a fit of rage. He's also the poster child for my anger issues aren't real if I bottle them. The name for which Jason Todd is known for is the name that he used when he came back as a supervillain. He sawed off the heads of every major lieutenant of every major your mob boss in Gotham in a single night. Tim Drake went full mad scientist and desperately tried to clone Superboy. You know, the thing Lex Luthor did. Damian Wayne started his Robin career chopping the head off of a bad guy. Both the bad kids are completely fine. There is literally so much evidence to the contrary of that, that if I tried to show every example of how wrong that is, this video would probably be three hours long. Listen, Roy Harper's not perfect, but Roy Harper also, you know, didn't turn into a full-scale supervillain when, when shit went bad for him? I'd debate that more shit's happened to Roy Harper than's happened to Jason Todd. His super lefty father figure that, like, basically fucking raised him and mentored him his entire life, beat the shit out of him and threw him on the fucking street when he found out that he was experimenting with drugs. You know, that thing teenagers do. Both of his parents died in the forest fire. His daughter was killed as literally just another part of a supervillain scheme. He lost an arm twice. The second time, it was ripped off and eaten in front of him. And how bad did he become, huh? What, he started using a little bit more weapons than just fucking bows? The dude turned out so well after that, he turned around and joined the Justice League in place of his mentor. All the bad kids are fine. Roy Harper turned out like Are you fucking kidding me? I can't. I don't. How is... How did somebody read comics and then come to that fucking conclusion? Not only all of that, the person said they're a Batman fan in the thread. They said that not only are they a Batman fan, but that they don't really read Green Arrow. So how the fuck do you even know? It's one person. It's one person on Twitter. Twitter is a hellscape. Never go on it again. Alright, I need, I need to vent this shit. So for those of you who don't know, I do a series on my YouTube called CBBC. It's the comic book book club, I read a book off of my shelf, and then I do a review of it. I put out my Patreon poll for what the second episode was going to be, and it turns out that I'm doing Batman Arkham Asylum, A Serious House and Serious Earth. One of the most critically acclaimed Batman books, it's by Grant Morrison, it's a big author. But what can go wrong? I have not read that book in a very long time. I remember that it was a little weird, but I didn't remember how weird. I just reread it for the series, just now. And, um... Like, I haven't done any research apart from just reading, but what the fuck is that book? I need someone to explain to me what the fuck happens in Batman Arkham Asylum, a serious house on serious earth. 
even though I own the book. I think Batman straight up kills like three people in this book. And for seemingly no reason. It's not like it's in self-defense. He's not chasing out a bad guy. He pushes Dr. Destiny down the stairs for no reason. The bad guy is defeated because he like tackles Batman to the ground and starts to choke him out. And then someone just comes up behind him and he encourages them to fucking slit his throat. And that's how he defeats the bad guy. He gets one of the bad guy's hostages to kill the bad guy and then shows no remorse about that. Am I dumb? Is the point of the book that Batman is so insane that all of this is supposed to make sense? Like, I hope I'm not showing my cards here as like an illiterate comic book fan, but I... What is this book? I'm so confused and I need to write a whole synopsis and I'm going to need to watch like three other people's YouTube videos just to understand what the fuck happens in this book. And I don't mean I don't understand like the plot. For some reason all of the inmates are loose in the asylum. Batman goes in to clear up that situation and in doing so interacts with a lot of his major villains. By the end he meets the person that released all of the villains, defeats them, and then goes back into the real world, all of it being a metaphor for Batman's mental state. I get that. But like why is Maxi Zeus here? Why does Batman stab his hand with a fucking pane of glass? Why the shit does he push Dr. Destiny down the fucking stairs? I'm so confused. I'm so confused. I, I need help. I don't understand. I'm gonna go watch Matthew Draper's video on it. Hopefully that'll explain something. It's gonna be a fun episode. This, this is gonna be fun. And that is going to be it for this month. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for sticking around. I'm just going to take a moment to thank all of my lovely, lovely patrons over on Patreon. Amanda Barnstead, Andra Lanowitz, Background Joshua, Bill Bro, Brandon Laney, Carol Cowett, Christopher Bosgard, Danny Walker, Dark Nimbus, Devaniculus, Dee Dee, Dragon Fang, Fireball Sensei, Gas Boss Gate Like Girl Keep, Have a Heart Tin Man, Jacob Safel, Jeffrey of Isles, Caitlin Kelly, Cat Q, Katie Hawkins, Magu, Nixie Shimo, Pandora A, Pinchy Mugre, Raymond Villasana, Righteous Duke, Ricky Dicky Davi, Sandra Wallace, Tangled Web, The Brain Teaser, Thomas Randolph, T.S. Famder, Ultraviolet, Wofu Badge 2, and all of my other lovely, lovely patrons over on Patreon. And if you too would like your name called out at the end of every single one of my YouTube videos on this channel, as well as the ability to vote on new episodes of the Comic Book Book Club as they come out, then feel free to hop on over to my Patreon and donate at least $15 or more. Or hey, that's not possible, I totally understand, even donating a dollar helps. Right now I am plugging away at episode 2 of the Comic Book Book Club, which is going to be on Batman, Arkham Asylum, A Serious House, and Serious Earth. This book is confusing as hell, so I am really hoping that this video turns out well. But I just want to say thank you guys for sticking around, thank you guys for watching, thank you guys for subscribing, hopefully, and I will see you guys next time.